Is this multicam shooting and editing for the rest of us? Apple just dropped Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 to the App Store. And here's our review and full tutorial of the live multicam feature. Hey guys, I'm very excited that Apple just launched Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 and that is their new release that just entered the App Store. We also already did a little preliminary video on that at the iPad Pro event last month in London, but now it's out. We've had a chance to play with it and yeah, here it is. Alongside Final Cut Pro for iPad 2, very long name to remember, they also launched Final Cut Camera, which is a free app for the iPhone to actually have a lot of manual controls on the iPhone, not unlike the Blackmagic Camera app. We'll talk about that app in particular in a separate video. Today I'm going to launch this video and I'm going to focus on Final Cut Pro for iPad 2. Let's dive right in. Actually, you are watching me through an iPhone. I can show you another angle here actually what it looks like. So this is the camera I'm looking at. It's an iPhone 15 Pro Max, actually. I even plugged in a monitor there at the back, as you can see. So maybe I can actually, yep, I can zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So there's a monitor here. The most exciting thing is any of the angles you're watching here is recorded on different iPhones and we are using Final Cut's Live Multicam feature. Now, how does it work? Well, I'm here in the Live Multicam view. You can have up to four angles. Now, this is first angle. Second angle is this main camera here. Third angle is a top shot that I have installed here. You can see that um, we have an iPhone launched on a very big Kessler crane. And that's the angle you see of the iPad here. We're also running a screen recording inside the iPad. And then there's a fourth angle, which is kind of a close up from over there. You can look at this camera and then you can just turn your head and look at that camera. So uh, for an interview shoot, that could be interesting. Of course, I guess it might be a little bit excessive, excessive to have four angles here. But this additional camera allows me to show you the behind the scenes and show you all the cameras that we have here and yeah, just run you through everything. Also, what we have here, we are hooked up with a external storage device. We had already the ability to record externally on the iPhone uh, through USB-C. Now with Final Cut Pro for iPad 2, it's also possible to have projects saved externally. So when you start a new project inside the app, you actually get the ability to choose if you want to save it internally or if you want to save it externally. And you can use any USB powered SSD or even card reader like this one. In this case, of course, we use the Cinity card. We launched a CF Express card recently, which is one terabyte made by Angelbird. It's Cinity branded. We decided to partner up with Angelbird because they just make amazing cards. And the cool thing is this card is cheaper than anything else in the market. If you use the code CineD1TB, you enter that voucher code and you will get this card for $179.99 or euros, depending on where you live, plus tax. Taxes vary depending on where you live and some shipping costs. Usually this card is $359. There might be some discounts, some other discounts around, but they are not as low as this one. So if you want this card, you know, go get it. And again, you can use it like I do here for external recording, either on your iPhone or on your iPad in Final Cut Pro for iPad 2. Now, back to the actual app. So one thing I didn't immediately realize is that this is not a live switcher app. So it's record. It's really live multicam. It's recording up to four streams, can be two or three as well, but it's recording all those four in this case. And then you make your edit decisions afterwards. You cannot make any edit decisions now. So one of the standard ways of how this would work in a switcher app, you would tap on one of those windows and then it would just cut to that. So this doesn't work. You will have to go through the multicam clip afterwards and do your edit decisions then. If I tap on here, what it actually does is, is focus. It doesn't actually select the different angles. But I can, and that's really cool, change the settings of all the apps at the same time here. So for example, if I want to change the settings on this one, 
I have to go into the full screen mode because the only other stuff I see here, recording time, uh, battery level. Yeah, everything is muted, which is funny. Shouldn't be audio monitoring. Ah, okay. Connect headphones to this iPad and listen to audio from this angle. That's really useful. I didn't prepare for that. We're actually recording audio separately with a Rode Wireless Go, which runs into one of the iPhones. You have that recording there too. But of course, it'd be useful to, of course, monitor that as well. But if I want to change any of the settings of this camera angle, I just have to press into full screen mode. So now I'm in full screen mode. And here I have almost or all of the same settings. I'm not sure if it's all of them, but most of the same settings I have in the actual Final Cut camera app on the phone itself. So here I can change from autofocus to manual focus. And as you can see, I'll go out of focus here. I mean, of course, with the limitations of a small sensor, it's not like a, a large sensor camera. We know that. As far as I can tell, there is no cinematic mode in this app, also not in Final Cut Camera. That's a bit unfortunate. I would have wished for having that really cool cinematic mode with this fake shallow depth of field also in Final Cut Camera. They're kind of giving you the most professional features. However, you know, it would be nice to have. I hope that can be implemented in a future version. And actually, it would be cool to have the cinematic mode, but still be able to rack focus. Maybe that is too processor intensive, but you know, to have the ability to fake rack focus in a way would be amazing. I mean, I know you can change the focus point of any video that you've shot with cinematic mode in Final Cut Pro for Mac afterwards, but it would be nice to be able to do this in real time manually on the phone as well. Right now you can just tap on stuff and it will autofocus and change the focus. But to have something like this, this little wheel here, and be able to, to do that with cinematic mode, that would be amazing. And then there's also manual and automatic shutter. So now I can change the shutter speed, of course that darkens and brightens the image. Now, of course, professional filmmakers will know changing the shutter speed is not actual a good way of actually changing the exposure of your image simply because it will influence the way movement looks like. When I wave like this, I'm recording actually at 30 frames per second, a 60th second of a shutter is perfect for cinematic motion. You will have this motion blur, but as soon as I go up to higher shutter speed, of course, the image will darken. You will see more jittery movement, and that's not something we want, right? In order to avoid this, you should use ND filters are the right way to go uh, to get right exposure. But because we don't have them built in, the only thing we can compensate for is shutter speed and ISO which you can also set manually here. Now, as we have found out in our uh, lab test of the iPhone 15 Pro, we also did a video on that. We actually ran dynamic range tests of the iPhone. We found out that basically the lowest ISO is the best ISO. The lower you can go, the less noise you're gonna have with the iPhone. That's very clear. It's a very small sensor. The phone actually is doing a lot of computational things like cleaning up noise afterwards, which is a very normal thing for any camera, but especially for smartphones with small sensors. Now in here, the light level is relatively low. I should probably brighten everything a little bit up so I can drop the ISO down to 100 or less in order to have the least amount of noise. This is live multicam recording. This is how it works. As soon as I stop the recording, I will see the multicam file and be able to edit it in post. Let's take a look. Okay, I stopped the recording and the first thing that immediately shows up in the iPad or actually Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 as asking me if it should transfer the large files from the iPhones. I mentioned already, you can either record in ProRes or in what is it called? HEVC, which is an H.265 based codec. Now, unfortunately, I think I didn't set up the cameras correctly. I wanted to record in, in the H.265 codec, but I think some of the cameras were set to ProRes. Now, what happened, I recorded a 17-minute clip. This is generating huge file sizes. I had it set to 4K UHD resolution, so those are very, very big files. It's asking me, this transfer is 112.66 gigabytes large. So we're talking about a 17-minute recording, right? And I can, I can either press transfer now or transfer later. I am able to already edit this without having this transferred, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of recording proxies internally 
in the iPad from the streams, which looked completely fine. There was no interruptions. By the way, also, I mean, I guess you saw that, but the lag is minimal. I don't know how they do it. I haven't done any measurements, but it looks better than anything else I've seen on iPhone, iPad connections before. So that's pretty cool. I can edit the proxies, but I can actually transfer the originals in the background as I'm doing that. So I'm going to do that now. I'll press transfer now. One eternity later. Okay, now the transfer is over. I waited until the transfer was over. I could have started with the editing using the proxy files here, but now I have everything. So I have the 100 gigabytes on this iPad and from this camera and also the normal HEVC files to edit. This is, by the way, where the transfers happen. It's called Final Cut Camera Transfer, this tab. Here in the history, you see when it was transferred from which camera, which is nice to see. And it's actually showing you the progress as it's going. And as I said, you need to have those devices active. They cannot be in lock mode uh, or have something else running in the foreground. So it's going to take a while. Yeah, just be ready for that. Let's dive into the actual multicam. So this is a multicam file that I created. I can now tap on append and then it will just drop it down to the timeline here. This is the full multicam file that I have. I will just zoom in here and I think I started around here so I'm not going to actually listen to everything I said I'm going to do a proper edit of this afterwards but I'm just going to shorten it here and I will start at the beginning here now of course this angle is meaningless in the beginning so we'll start with that angle the audio was actually recorded on the top shot camera uh, that is Johnny's 5 iPhone here. And it's already set to play solo here. So this is where I ran the Rode Wireless Pro in uh, using a USB-C cable. That is the receiver to this little sender that I had here. And in that iOS app in Final Cut Camera on that phone, I selected this as the audio source. And now here in Final Cut Camera, I define it as the solo source, meaning it doesn't actually switch audio every time I switch the camera angle. So this is the good audio that I want to use. That's important, right? Usually you don't switch audio every time you switch a camera angle. Now, because we don't have any pre-cuts, because it's not possible to do any live switching while you're recording, I have to do all that now. And what I do is I start at the beginning, I press the play button, and then I can select which angle it starts with. Well, actually, I'm on the wrong angle now. So I'm going to start with this one, of course. And I'm doing my little intro here and when I want I can anytime I can switch to another camera angle like that one or of course my little close-up side angle and back to me and this is how you basically edit the full video you can go forward and you know like I'm actually moving that camera here at some point this would be when I you know, cut to that behind the scenes camera, which is that additional angle in this case on angle one here. Yeah. And then it can just cut back and forth. And what it does, it makes the actual cuts in the timeline here. Now, if I want to change the angle afterwards, I can still move back and again, choose another one, or I just long press on one of them and then I can go to edit angles and then I'm in the angle editor and I can change different stuff about all those angles. You can also make multicam clips that are not automatically synced. So if you have a different angle, which is not an iPhone, uh, like a different camera, you can actually make a new multicam clip as well. You just press new multicam here and then you would select the different angles that you are defining as that multicam clip and then final cut would automatically try to sync them based on the audio I think within the multicam editor you can correct those things like if you know like if something is in the wrong position you might be able to change it around here let's first look at the multicam editor honestly I still have to dive into this as well I'm not very familiar with Final Cut Pro for iPad in general so I have to still get my head around how it works but I think it's a very very nice intuitive way I've met people at the Apple event who are not professional filmmakers like we are who have actually started editing on the iPad, which is exciting to me to hear. And they, of course, approach this from a different angle than professional filmmakers who are used to non-linear editing software like Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci. So they come from a different angle and they're actually starting fresh. And I think Apple has done a good job at addressing those people because, of course, I don't think professional filmmakers are necessarily the main target audience to use Final Cut Pro 
for iPad 2. It's probably content creators that have an iPhone, maybe also have an iPad. You already have two angles if you have an iPhone and an iPad, if you want to use live multicam. But usually, you know, like you're on a set or on a shoot, even if it's like with a client or a colleague, somebody else will have an iPhone and you can use older iPhones as well to use with live multicam. I actually tested it with the iPhone 13 Pro max and that works just fine of course you don't have all the functions you will not have the log recording option but it, and actually that phone can still record ProRes. it's exciting you know it is possible to use older devices there is a limitation of course depending on the processor that you use but you don't have to have the latest and greatest iphone so if you still have an older one lying around still that you know you haven't sold yet or whatever or another family member has another iphone which is very often the case of course you can use that also as a second or third angle if you use the live multicam feature and it's a very very easy way of course to do multicam for people that are not used to working with time code syncing and don't want to use dedicated hardware or anything like that so that's that's pretty cool i'm not actually going to talk about the other functions that apple introduced with final cut pro for ipad 2 here because i think live multicam is a subject by itself if you want a conclusion from me what i like and what i don't like about it well in general i think it's it's great to have this live multicam feature because it's a really really innovative function that i haven't seen in any other ipad app or even ios app in general or even android app for that matter it's a very very smart integration connecting the iphones works pretty well it's fairly easy there's by the way one thing that you have to note you have to enable password sharing like icloud you know like the icloud keychain password sharing thing that needs to be enabled on your iPhone in order for the iPad to connect to your iPhone. There was one iPhone where we like a test iPhone we have at the office where this was not enabled and I was, simply was not able to connect it. And if that is enabled, it works really flawlessly. The lag is very minimal. There's very little delay in between the live streaming here. So that is really, really nice. Just having this ability built in without adding extra hardware is amazing to me. And this is something that I think a lot of content creators will use for their YouTube videos and Instagram reels and so on in the near future. There's two things that I would definitely ask Apple to add in the next iteration of Final Cut Pro for iPad. And the first one is, and I mentioned it before, simply add different flavors of ProRes. We need lower, lower quality options of ProRes. I mean, it's not really lower quality because I think the iPhone will not actually deliver the full quality of what's possible in a ProRes 422 HQ. And it's a bit of an overkill to generate file sizes that are this big. Now, of course, you can use an external recorder or a reader like this works with our CF Express Type B card. And you can plug that just in like I showed before you can connect that to your iPhone and then you can record externally so the file sizes are not that big of an issue. However, there's really no need to have ProRes 42 HQ. The other thing is I hope that they will simply make it possible to cut live as well because it's a huge time saver. I'm aware that a lot of people who will be using this feature will not actually have somebody who can operate the iPad while recording, meaning can tap on the different angles. But even if I do this myself alone, like if I record it myself, here, which I did actually before on multiple iPhones, and I have the live multicam in front of me, I want to be able to actually already pre-select the angle that I want. It's a very easy function to add, and it would already give me a multicam clip that has edits inside, and then I can just correct those edits in post, shift them around if I cut a little bit too early, or a little bit too late, or I want to use a different angle. I can st still do this in post because I still have all the footage from the four different cameras. Other than that, it works great. It's really the way Apple integrated that is really smart. You don't need to mess around with time code generators. You don't need to mess around with cabling or anything like that. The background transfer of the files works flawlessly. You can already edit the proxies and it will just automatically online in the background. That's all perfect, right? So if you add those two functions, I think it's going to be a solution that millions and millions or even or at least thousands and thousands of people will use. It's really democratizing multicam and it is live multicam for the masses. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm having a really great time with this iPad Pro. I really have to say there are limitations, of course, but once you wrap your head around of what's possible now with a device like this, with the power of the M4 chip is simply stunning and the screen 
screen is absolutely mind boggling. I'm very, very excited about using this and I look forward to doing actually more videos with this about different aspects of pro workflows for filmmakers because I think there's a lot to cover. This was it for me about live multicam, a first look and a first test. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Cinedy for a lot more videos like this one and more about the iPad Pro and Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 and Final Cut Camera. Thanks for watching. Thank you.